So, since the first playable characters came out, the devs have been working on the human player type for what seems like 3 billion years, and I'll admit that I haven't even gotten through all the levels yet, but I've been pretty impressed so far, so I wanted to give a critical review of the current content. Now, if this is your first time playing, I definitely recommend picking one of the starting regions with lower difficulty, which I put in green here. Um, all the servers are getting pretty overpopulated right now, so you can pick one of the yellow regions if the recommended ones are full, but really try not to go for the areas in red unless you really know what you're doing or are just trying to speedrun the game. Pretty much all areas are player vs environment zones, but there are a few player vs player areas around here, and if you really want to play on a private server, you can do that over here. But the admins aren't so great, and it sucks if you change your mind because after you're there, you can't leave, so I'd probably give it a miss. Okay, at the start you have to choose a race, and in the past, Caucasian male was definitely the most OP, but they've all become a lot more balanced in more recent patches, at least in the easier starting regions, but if you look at the race perks tab, still some nice privileges with this choice, so that's what I went with. Okay, so once you've chosen your starting region and race, you have to go through a 9 month loading screen while your character spawns, and that already sounds bad, but what's even worse is that once you've actually spawned, you have to go through 18 levels of tutorial, the first few of which are just interactive cutscenes. Even when you get to start moving around and interacting with the environment, what kinda sucks is that the only other users you really get to interact with are the two parent players that take you through the start of the tutorial, and the trouble is if they haven't advanced their parenting skill tree, you end up with really screwed up stats for the rest of the game. That's really just down to the RNG of who you get paired up with. So the first few levels of tutorial really aren't so memorable, but once you've made it to level 5 or 6, you've usually unlocked the friendship and knowledge trees, but you do have to spend around 6 hours a day at a learning academy to keep leveling that up. Okay, so as we get to about level 17 or 18, you basically finish the tutorial, and it turns out that the first thing you actually realize once you're done is that it had nothing to do with the rest of the game. And it turns out the whole tutorial is pretty much designed to sell you the college or university DLC, which is kind of overpriced for what you get, but if you decide to go for it, it can help you get a step up on free-to-play players in the mid-game. Um, so the mid-game itself generally takes place between around level 18 and 65, where the two biggest focuses are on sustaining the newly unlocked relationship meter and generating in-game currency, which is usually denoted in dollars. So first of all, the relationship meter. Uh, this is the built-in drive to find a sexual companion, spend time with them, and reproduce. There are some factions where your parent players choose a companion for you, but in most of the western factions you get to choose yourself. You might think that this is a way better idea, but the problem is they also have to choose you. So, it might sound better on paper, but make sure you think out the gameplay. Now, when it comes to generating in-game currency, the most common strategy is to trade your playtime for dollars. Uh, if you see most users during this process, while they're technically still actual players, the majority of them are running scripts, so they're typically AFK and are pretty much indistinguishable from NPCs. So, because it's an MMO, there aren't really any distinct objectives, and generally sometime during the mid-game you have to figure out what it is that you want to do. Uh, some players focus on their relationship meter, some on getting more dollars, some on really maxing out certain skill trees, and some struggle to figure it out at all. There's no right answer really, just like any other MMO, I think your goal is to just enjoy the time you spend playing without ruining it for other people, and hopefully when you're a higher level you can get to the point where you enjoy helping players who might be struggling. So, when you do get to around level 65, they say you should be at the end game content, but in practice this is getting later and later all the time, despite the level cap remaining pretty much the same. But nevertheless, what's good here is that you generally have a pretty fulfilled relationship meter, your important skill trees are maxed out, you can generally spend the rest of your time exploring the map and doing the things you want to do. Trouble is that at this point it can be hard to actually do those things because you start to experience a lot of bugs with your character. This is just because with the amount of variation in each user's programming, you can't expect it to function perfectly after so many iterations. Around level 80 is when you'll really start to encounter a lot of errors, until eventually the screen just goes black and your playtime is over. A lot of users wonder what actually happens at this point, and no one really knows. Uh, some players think you respawn, some think you only get to play once, some even think you unlock a sandbox mode where you can basically just play over all the good bits on a special map. But you know, it doesn't seem to me like there's a big difference between before you start the game and after you finish, so don't overthink it and make the most of your playtime. 